Hi guys, I'm doing something a bit different for this month's prompt squad and I'm going to rearrange the order of the video a little bit. I felt like I was doing a summary at the beginning and then going backwards to my take on it, so hopefully this order is going to make a bit more sense. So this month's prompt was redraw your old art, which was suggested by Kai, and this is what I came up with for it. Because most of my art pre-2017 is in an attic halfway across the country, I decided to take one of the first pieces of art that I created on this channel and recreate it in my current style. I'll put a little bit of a clip in of that piece and maybe a link as well if you'd like to see the whole video of that, but my basic thoughts behind it were pretty simple. I was just coming back to painting after not really doing it for a very long time and I just wanted to paint something that I was interested in, so I chose the Japanese myth of the seven-tailed fox or the kitsune and this is what resulted from that. So going back to it over two years later, I couldn't help but think a lot about the last couple of years and how much has changed in that time. Not only when it comes to art in terms of the skill, but also when it comes to how I feel about art. When I started again, I was really frustrated, not only by how rusty I was at it, but by how I felt about painting and drawing in general. I'd just come out of this awful architecture job where I was hired because of my drawing skill to only then be regularly shit on by my boss for not drawing something in 10 minutes that I told him multiple times would have taken me hours. So it became so linked in my head that I just felt really awful whenever I had to draw something. And when I did finally quit that job, it was like this dark cloud that I just couldn't get out from under. I felt like it really tainted something that I loved and that just made me so bitter and angry about it. So I wanted to get past that. But forcing myself to sketch alone was just not working for me. And because I was watching a fair amount of artists on YouTube, I thought, why not give that a go? I thought it might at least force me to show my art out to other people again, and also it just made me draw something regularly, I hoped. I didn't speak in my first videos, and I think that's because I still felt really vulnerable. And to be honest, I was expecting to get a lot of hateful comments, like I'd gotten in that job to be honest, and I felt like if I didn't expose my voice in them, then maybe I'd be a bit more protected from the criticism that I was expecting to receive. But to my surprise, it ended up being this completely opposite experience to that, and everyone was really positive and friendly. and. Though if I'm being honest, that didn't change how I felt about my art immediately. Over time, it definitely did help me gain back a lot of my confidence. Sorry for getting a bit heavy at the moment, I just wanted to try and explain what I was feeling when I was painting this piece. I just couldn't help but reflect on the differences in how I felt now compared to then. And standing on this side of things, so much feels like it has changed, even if maybe on the surface it doesn't appear so. It's like when I got my cat Rory. I've got all these photos of him as a kitten next to his favourite toy mouse, and when you look at them you realise how small he was when we first adopted him, and how big he is now, but day to day with him growing up, it wasn't really noticeable at all. So yeah, I guess I just wanted to end on that sentiment. I was kind of put off a little when I first read this prompt in many ways, because I knew it would bring me back to that time in my head and how much it would affect my mood but it didn't affect me, or it didn't affect me as badly as I thought it would. <laughs> I look like this YouTube channel in general, I guess. <laughs> Saying all this, I'm not actually that happy with this painting. <laughs> it's okay. I do like the composition a lot more in this one. I think it's a lot better. But the colours are a little bit too dull for me in person. I was hoping it'd be brighter, but I think the way this watercolour reacts to this paper, I've, I've made a note to myself to not use it again in this way because I think it ruins the watercolour colours. Anyway, uh, and I also miss the Japanese building that I had in the original. It didn't work with this kind of spiral I was trying to create in the image, so I ended up editing it out when I first drew this, and to be fair, I do think it's overcomplicated in the first painting and it kind of is distracting from what you're supposed to be looking at. So I think I did make the right choice when it comes to the composition, but I don't know, maybe I need to revisit it again in another two years and see if I can sort it out this time. So yeah, that's my take on this mum's prompt of redrawing an old piece of art. So now let's go and see all the other wonderful members of Prompt Squad and how they tackled the challenge. Emily redrew her Daredevil drawing from 2012, and I think the difference between the two is made even more striking, just because of how beautifully rendered her latest piece is. What I love about her take on it is that you can see so many areas where she's just been improving in her art. She's using lots of different mediums together well, she's thinking more about the layout and composition, and it's just giving it a lot more emotion as well. Her tones are a lot stronger, so you can enjoy the light and dark, and it all just works a lot better. It's just got very good contrast. 
I don't know what to say. I, I think a lot of it speaks for itself. I just kind of wonder what Emily's art's going to look like in another seven years. <laughs> so Nadia has to be the biggest age difference who took part. No contest really. But I think that's what makes it so special as well. Because Nadia took what must have been one of her first finished drawings from back when she was just four years old and reinterpreted it with what she saw it to be as an adult. And I think the results are just perfect. I mean, using markers just like the initial piece does a really good way of showing how her skills have developed over time. And by framing it in that same circular shape, you can really see the connection between the two pieces as well, you know, beyond the colours. So yeah, I think it's a great take on the prompt. Dave took a piece of art he did in October 2017, which I was really happy to see, personally, as I'm pretty sure that's one of the first pieces of art I saw of his quite a couple of years ago now. And I can see how much his skills in character development and storytelling have improved, even over such a short amount of time. His torso has become more expressive, and you get a much better feel of movement through the posing in the last piece than you did in the first piece. You can really definitely tell that he's done a good job of keeping the good humour in all of his pieces throughout, whilst building up his art skills. Kai took the oldest drawing he had from 2002 and recreated it with his current main medium of digital paint. There's so much to mention when comparing these two pieces, but I think the main things that I noticed would be how much more dynamic his posing is. He's now using perspective to really add a lot of interest into the character, and introducing more into his backgrounds too to give them more depth. His understanding of musculature, I think, is the most interesting because you can see how developed it is. And yeah, there's just too much to pick out in his one. <laughs> there's just so much growth and I think it's really interesting to see the two of them together. I just want to say thank you everyone for joining in again in this month's Prompt Squad. I think this has been probably one of my favourite challenges that we've done up to now when it comes to seeing everyone's takes on the prompt because you can just see how much growth over time has happened and it gives you a real perspective on each of the artists too. What they care about, their tastes, how it's changed over time. I really hope you'll go check them out too to maybe see a bit more of their current art and maybe some of the journey that led them up to this point too. All their links are going to be in the description. Now all that's left is to tell you next month's prompt which is a bit broad, it's one hue green suggested by Nadia. Basically, I just want you to create a painting or a drawing only using the colour green. Sounds simple enough, <laughs> but I think this is going to be an interesting challenge in seeing how we all work with tones and contrast to try and keep an image visually interesting when it's only one colour. It's any topic, any subject you like, just only use the colour green when you paint. I can't wait to see all of your takes on this prompt. The deadline's going to be the 2nd of September, so I'll see you that week for the next instalment of Prompt Squad. Take care.